Skull, my friends! It's that time of year again. The time we celebrate the first European in America, Leif Erikson. A great Viking, a great explorer. It only makes sense to honor him by reviewing a movie I found in the dollar bin. There were some movies, terrible movies, movies so awful, no one would touch. Then came a Matthew, sad little Matthew, Matthew decided these movies to watch. For every good movie, there's at least ten bad. Matthew didn't drag himself through the crap to find the worst ones there are to be had. Today's episode, Thor, Legend of the Magical Hammer. Everything about this DVD suggests it's going to be trash. First and foremost, what story about Norse mythology wouldn't be family approved by the Dove Foundation, a Christian organization? Not that I disagree with showing this as a religious movie. Then we get some pretty decent artwork on the front. That in no way reflects the actual screen caps on the back. Kinda odd considering when we usually get artwork that looks nothing like the film, it looks like what the film is trying to rip off. This just kinda looks like the movie. And oh yeah, this is clearly trying to cash in on that slightly more popular movie about Thor. Although, the story is more a cross between Disney's Hercules and How to Train Your Dragon, which I guess is exactly what I'd expect from a movie like this. So yeah, Thor Legend of the Magical Hammer came out in 2011, the same year as Marvel's Thor, and only a year after How to Train Your Dragon. Though it didn't make it to the US until 2013. Yep, this is an import from our friends in Iceland, the country who banished Leif Erikson's father, Eric the Red, to Greenland. So, maybe not the most appropriate movie, all things considered, but hey, you keep Leif Erikson Day in your way and I'll keep it in mine. Of course, this isn't any old Icelandic movie. This is the very first fully CG animated film from Iceland, in 2011. Only about 16 years late on that one, Iceland. The film was directed by Oscar Johansson, whose biggest claim to fame is directing an episode of Lazy Town. There's a voice cast listed on IMDb, but I'm pretty sure this is the Icelandic voice cast, not the English one, unless these guys dubbed both languages, which is odd, but not out of the question. Most of the cast is pretty unknown, but Emmett J. Scalin had a small role in the Guardians of the Galaxy. So, yeah, one of these guys is in an actual Marvel movie. So for my main man, Leif Erikson, here's Thor and the Magical Hammer. But first we need to know about every fucking company that helped with this damn movie. So we open on some skinny redhead dweeb pretending to fight a giant. Is Thor around? Just follow the rumble. Wait, 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 what? Thor? Are you alright? So, this is just about some kid named Thor, not about, like, the god Thor. Thor is the son of Odin, king of the gods himself. What? 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 Oh, and his friend here is named Edda. As in the poetic Edda. As in the basis of all Norse mythology. That's... Kind of like if there were a movie about Jesus and he had a friend named Testament. Oh, thank the gods we've cut away. Here we have some valiant warriors who died in battle traveling to Valhalla, with their battle wounds still intact. So, Valhalla's just like the waiting room from Beetlejuice? But coming with them is Sindri, a salesman. Really, not sure how he found his way to Valhalla without dying in battle, but I could probably look past that. I am less apt to accept how he flies on a paper airplane to sneak past Heimdall. I'm pretty sure there's not a single mythological afterlife where that's possible. Back to Thor, and here's a bit of an odd quirk. The whole being a weak, misunderstood human thing is clearly lifted from Disney's Hercules, in which Hercules is the son of Zeus and his wife Hera, even though in Greek mythology he was the son of Zeus and a human. 
On the contrary, Thor is the son of Odin and his wife Frigg, but in the movie he's the son of Odin and a human woman. Frigg is nowhere to be found in this movie, though they got a few of the other gods right. Anyway, Thor... I can't call him that, um... David sacrifices a pig to Odin and asks him to become a warrior, which I guess is lucky for Odin, because it seems the sacrifices have been getting fewer and fewer lately. Oh, and Sindri's there trying to sell his magical hammer Mjornir. The Crusher! Oops, I mean Crusher. It makes it so much cooler when you give it an anglicized name. Do you know what does not make it cooler? Giving it a face and making it talk. No, it takes time. You have to learn how to use me. Oh, and it knocks out Odin's eye. Because that's how that happened. So Odin gets mad and throws away... Ahem... <clears throat> Crusher. And wouldn't you know it, it lands in David's house. His mom takes it as a sign that he's supposed to be a blacksmith and gets him to fix a hole in Edda's pot. Uh, I'm not that kind of a hammer. <laughs> You can talk! Yeah, so? You got a problem with that? I do! I do have a problem with that! Thanks for asking! Odin? The king? Your father? <laughs> That's a good one! Yep, I'm with the talking hammer on this one. Then we find Sindri flying his... I can't even call that a paper airplane. It's a paper boat. And in case you're curious, no, there's not a character in Norse mythology named Sindri, at least not that I could find. He flies into the realm of giants, and hey, look, Yzma got promoted to the Ice Queen. Yeah, this is Hel, Queen of the Underworld. I'll give them credit for at least knowing who Hel is, but she's not really a villain. See, the Nordic Hel isn't really, like, Christian Hel, or any mythological underworld, really. It's just a place where you sit around, hang out with your ancestors, and watch over your descendants. Hell isn't really a bad guy. Then again, this is the movie that made Thor into this, and gave Mjornir a face, and called him Crusher. So, I guess I can't expect complete accuracy here. So Sindri tries selling Hell the Eye of Odin. Odin's little eye. <laughs> That's not how eyes work. And uh oh, looks like hell's going to destroy David's town. Are we having duck for dinner? <laughs> Hammers don't eat food. Hell takes all the farmers, including Edda, but David escapes thanks to Crusher. Then we find Odin and Freya talking about the lack of sacrifices and Hell's invasion of the towns. I've never understood why you, king of the gods, have a half-human son. Neither can anyone with an even passing knowledge of Nordic mythology. There was a time I was courting Hell. Hell? Queen of the Underworld? That never happened. I'm just gonna leave it at that. David finally wakes up and sees what Hell did to the town. They've taken Edda! And your mother! Don't forget about her! Not to mention everyone in your village, you'd think you might have more than one reason to go after her. Good job! Give me five! <clears throat> you know, I try to not steal memes from other YouTubers, especially wildly more successful YouTubers, but I don't know that I can follow that joke up with anything but. This is not good for my stomach. Uh oh. Yeah. You ever seen a hammer throw up? What am I watching? Take us days to get there. <laughs> you seem to forget we've got magic on our side. Um, no. No, you don't. 
The only magic present so far is from the hammer. You can't suddenly make goats fly just because Thor has flying goats. David catches up with the giants, and I am 100% certain Etta could slip through those bars if she wanted to. David is getting his ass handed to him until Freya and Odin show up. And hey, look, it's Hell's half-brother. Looks more like a boy to me. But with a little time, who knows? I'm really not okay with Freya's turn from love goddess to slutty truck stop waitress. I'm not gonna leave my friend at the mercy of the giants. Huh? I will let them take my mom and the rest of my tribe, though. Meanwhile, one of the giants finds Sydney or whatever his name was, and takes him back to the land of giants. Scary stuff with grinding noises. Sweet hell. Okay, I do appreciate that they worked the term sweet hell into a kid's movie. Wow, Dave sure went from getting his ass handed to him to taking out a whole bunch of guys with absolutely no training or anything. Dave challenges the greatest of the Giants fighters to a fight, which is a lot more Thor than anything he's done up to this point. Uh, he's trying to fight the big guy, but he's opening a cage. Wouldn't it be crazy if it were some smaller, weak-looking person? Glad that's not overused. Okay, a little credit. This is Old Age, who makes Dave super old and stuff. Edda grabs him and gets out of there, but the giants now have Orange Crush. Then Edda invents snowboarding. Just like the legend depicts. I'll give you one guess what saves Dave and makes him young again. One fucking guess. That's the power of love! Fuck this movie! This movie is approved by the Dove Foundation. We're going to be a great team, Crusher. Ice and fire. Invincible! Ice and fire? You mean ice and lightning? And man, Odin's being a real defeatist about this. We're doomed. Doomed! And so is all mankind. Down to the last. <laughs> oh man, an army of brain dead Shreks. How will Odin and his mighty army ever defeat them? Things could not be worse. Yes, they could. How? Could be raining. So hell covers the world in a blizzard and freezes Etta. David falls in the lake and ends up in the room with all the people hells froze. I'm sorry. Forgive me. And I'm sorry. And not only does a single tear unfreeze Etta, it seems to unfreeze everyone in the room. That sure was a non-issue. But if you want to talk pointless, nothing tops this scene. <laughs> Stop looking! He can't go when you're looking! The chances of me not smashing this with an axe are getting smaller all the time. Huh? Oh, come here, my darling little boy! Ah, shit, I thought I ditched the old lady. So Hell puts the warriors from Dave's village out there where Heimdall can see them to trick him into opening the bridge. But, uh, at this point they know Hell is coming this way with some giants. Maybe ask them to come back later, or tell them to just wait or something? And why is everyone in Valhalla so useless? I know they were complaining about the new guys, but surely there's a good fighter SOMEWHERE in Valhalla. And ah ha 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 ha, the villain loses her Marge Simpson wig. Ah! <laughs> mm, didn't 
expect the movie to go all cannibal holocaust on me. Dave drops in and manages to break the spell Hell had on Fanta. Yeah, hit him with a stick. Wouldn't want to kill anyone in this kid's movie. Nice try, but you're still not cool. But Hell has a sword to Etta's neck and demands David lose the hammer. So he throws it away. Gee, I wonder what his plan is. Is the hammer gonna come back? You said you'd let her go! Yes, well, keeping my word isn't really my thing. I mean, her father is the god of lying. You kinda had to see that coming. Just like we all saw Crusher coming back and killing Hell coming. Be to remember for all eternity. We should call it... Uh, we'll call it... Um, what should we call it? Thor's Day? Thor's Day! And that's the story of the first Wednesday. But at least we get a good hanging in before it's over. So that's Thor, Legend of the Magical Hammer. That probably wasn't worth the dollar I paid for it. Okay, it's not awful. In fact, it's kind of a mixed bag. The animation is pretty good, but the character designs are really unappealing. David himself has these weird ragdoll proportions that look like he was modeled after Woody. The acting is decent, but the story is really generic and boring. And the accuracy is... well... This is the Norse mythology equivalent of Dragon Ball Evolution. I am surprised they got some of the details right, but it's clear they didn't do much more than a quick Wikipedia search before writing any of this. I think the biggest example is the main villain being Hell. Loki would have been the more obvious choice, so it's nice they went with someone else, but Hell just really isn't a villain the way Loki is. So says the guy who wears a helmet Vikings didn't actually wear to review a movie about Nordic mythology in celebration of a man who was Catholic. But hey, this is America. I'm gonna steal your culture and make the coolest damn thing out of it I can. Try and stop me! Overall, I definitely wouldn't recommend Legend of the Magical Hammer, unless you have a little kid who's just obsessed with how to train your dragon or something. But even then, this is a massive letdown from that, so maybe not. But this movie is missing a Viking's favorite thing. At least his favorite non-alcoholic thing. Metal music. Therefore, I'm dedicating the rest of the month of October to Metal Ween. Where horror movies and metal collide. Surely there's some metal song I can use to bridge this review to the next. to pay my most beloved son Dave and his hammer a little visit. Dave? I thought his name was Thor. For the brain cells who valiantly gave themselves that I might write this review. <laughs>